how you ship your products into Amazon FBA warehouses this Q4 could make or break your Amazon business. In this video today, we're gonna go over how to avoid stockouts, how to avoid losing hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally, and how to efficiently get your product into Amazon warehouses and into customers' hands in time for the busy Q4 season. Let's do this. I've built and led multiple seven-figure Amazon brands. Now, I'm setting out to share how I did it with radically transparent and detailed weekly videos. Join the journey with me and break free. Welcome to Heist. What is up guys? Welcome back to Heist, another action-packed Amazon specific video on how to optimize your Amazon FBA business. This Q4 is going to be insane. I mean, Q4s generally are insane, but this Q4 in particular is gonna be really insane. I alluded to it in my Q4 apocalypse video, which I'll link up above and you can check out after watching this video, but we are in unprecedented times. I've already spoken about how to set up a warehouse and a separate 3PL facility to ship product outside of Amazon FBA for when things get crazy and when you may not have stock in place as a backup plan. But what we're gonna talk about today is your primary plan. How to get goods into the country efficiently and most importantly, how to beat the clock, how to beat the congestion, how to deal with unprecedented demand and cost increases for your shipping from port or from your warehouse to actual Amazon FBA facilities and ultimately out to customers. I'm telling you guys, if you miss the boat on this, if you don't map out these strategies that I'm gonna talk about in the video today, you are at risk of losing hundreds of thousands of dollars this Q4. I'm not saying that as a soundbite. I'm not saying that as a shock tactic. I'm saying if you miss the boat, there could be lots of money on the line that could either make, or in the case of these strategies, potentially break your Amazon business. So before we get into my screenshot and going through some of these dynamic situations and strategies, I wanna to talk today about something that's really important, which is a mental shift in Q4, more than any other Q4 that we've ever seen before. The mental shift is this. First, products are going to cost more money. The average container load is somewhere around 4,000 to 4,500 bucks typically over the last couple of years. Currently it's $7,000. So your freight from China or other manufacturers into the US is going to see a 30 plus percent increase in your costs. So that's point number one, costs are going up. Point number two, it's going to take longer getting products into port, out of port, and then out to Amazon FBA warehouses. We've talked about this a little bit, I don't think that's much of a surprise, but there's definitely gonna be some delays. What's really, really critical though, is that you need to be ready for the mentality that it is better to cost more money and to have inefficiencies with how you ship your product and get them into Amazon FBA than if you stock out. And it's hard to do, right? Most months, most times, you wanna squeeze every possible ounce out of your business to reduce costs. You wanna optimize your inventory and get product into as few warehouses as possible so that your cost per unit goes down, both from China and Asia, as well as into Amazon warehouses. The cards are off. You're gonna to have to spend a lot more money, you're gonna to have to be inefficient because it's more important to have stock in place than have no stock at all. So there's an opportunity cost that I think is difficult for people to, to get around. The second thing I would say is that in Q4 especially, but in this Q4, you're gonna have to raise your prices and you're going to have to optimize and or reduce or shut off your ad costs in order to have an ROI benefit. Again, cost to get product into the US is gonna be slower cost to get it to warehouses is gonna be slower and more expensive, and you're likely gonna have multiple legs, multiple storage components, a lot of operating costs that you just don't normally have for a typical Q4. The best way to uncover that is to realize that you're gonna to need to increase your prices, you might have to reduce a little bit of your rank, 
You might have to reduce what you would normally spend on an Amazon pay-per-click, but the net benefit, the net ROI, and the fact that you're likely gonna have tons of sellers and tons of competition that is out of stock, it's gonna make your Amazon business benefit from Q4 and reduce a lot of the operational risk and operational cost. So, costs are gonna go up. It's gonna be less efficient and you're gonna to have to ship a lot of stuff out. Your prices are gonna to have to go up and your Amazon pay-per-click is gonna to need to either be optimized, shut off, or reduced significantly in order to make ROI. So what are some strategies that we can deploy? We'll now dive into my computer and go over the things that I am doing in my personal brands, the actual tactics and strategies for Q4 to get product into Amazon FBA in an efficient manner. Let's do this. Okay, so we are in my computer now and the first thing that I like to do when initiating an Amazon FBA shipment is to leverage a really cool software tool called Sellerize. You guys know that I've been a huge fan of this software tool since day one and have been pumping it up um, for quite some time because I love it and I use it a lot. And one of my favorite features is the shipping optimizer. If you guys want access to this, I think I've, it's a free month that I've got access to with a promo code and link that I will put in the description as well as pin it into a comment below. So if you wanna kick the tires on it for a free month, use that link. It pays for my coffee bill, which is kinda of nice, so it gives me a bit of a kickback commission. Or if you don't wanna uh, benefit me in any way, you can definitely go straight to sellerize.com and, and do it that way too. So um, I'm promoting it really not for the money, but because I think it's an awesome platform and an awesome software tool. So there's a bunch of stuff here on the left-hand side that you can select in terms of all the different feature sets. In terms of the strategies I'm gonna be talking about right now, use the shipment optimizer tab here on the left-hand side and select it. What you do is, is you select the product that you want to ship in and uh, hit next. This is the very same thing that you would do if you booked it within Seller Central. It just gives you some really cool dynamic things to adjust and edit the end destination and strategy of how the product goes into Amazon FBA warehouses, which is why I like to use it and why I'm recommending it for these strategies. So you hit next and then you wanna have a name for this. So I might just put in here test because um, I'm not actually gonna go live with this. Go next. And then you can pre-populate wherever you want the origination point of the shipment to start. So in my case, I'm typically gonna see things go into the Long Beach port within the Los Angeles area in California, which is the closest and most efficient way from China to get product into the US. Then I've got a staging area fairly close to Long Beach in California that can be used to stage, palletize, and get product ready to go into Amazon FBA facilities. It can also be used for short-term storage, uh, FBA, or sorry, a uh, FBM fulfillment arm, a storage warehouse, a lot of different things. So that's my primary go-to. So typically what I'll do is I'll come through here and I will select from the drop-down my LA warehouse and then I will hit next. You're gonna to wanna to come down to case packed product. This product, I think it's five per. I'll just keep it simple. We'll make it like 20. I think I'd be able to send in like 600 pieces or something, but I'll keep it simple and go 20. Go next and ta-da. So this is um, tying into the API of Amazon Seller Central and it's coming back and saying, hey, the algorithm is running what it needs to run. Amazon's telling me to send it to three different locations throughout the country. In normal times, even in a normal Q4, what I would do using the Sellerize tool is I would deselect the locations that are furthest away from my California warehouse and I would book them. And usually this tool, you can get it down to one or maybe even two warehouses. And uh, you know, so you have like this, the shortest distance and cost to get it from your California location to whatever one of these destinations are. This is a key point and a key strategy for how I'm using Q4 shipping this year for FBA is I'm gonna send it to all, four, all three of these different locations. And again, it pains me to do this because it's gonna cost me a lot more money. I'm shipping stuff across the country, but key point, key strategy number one with this approach is to diversify the locations with which 
you are sending your product into Amazon FBA warehouses. Why would you do this if it costs more money, could be slower, could reduce your profitability? Here's the reason. You can't predict which one of these warehouses might get congested, might have really slow four plus week check-in times, and which ones are gonna be fast. So I want for each shipment that I deploy to try to spread the risk into at least two different locations, ideally three different locations within the Amazon network. Key point number one, multiple warehouses. The second thing I'm personally gonna do with my FBA shipping strategy is using different shipping methods. You've got three options, right? You can ship via SBD, small package carrier using UPS, which is non-palletized, so it's literally master cartons that get loaded onto a truck. You can use a partner carrier using LTL freight, which it gets palletized and sent using one of the preferred carriers of Amazon. Or you can use a LTL carrier with one of your warehousing logistics 3PL providers that may have booking appointments and kind of efficient lanes that get product into Amazon faster and maybe less expensively than even LTL Amazon freight. So there's three real main methods to use. I'm planning on using all of them for the exact same product. And here's why. First approach is to select something that's closest to the location where my product is, in this case, California, and send them SBD UPS freight. So looking at this here, the closest one is gonna be in this Rialto, California here at the bottom, SNA4. Even though this is a big product and I would never typically send it UPS, I'm gonna bite the bullet and have about double the shipping cost to get this in through UPS. The thought being that I don't have as much risk of having booking appointments getting rolled or truckers not coming to pick the goods up or other substantial delays that could add significant check-in time to your goods. In my view, SBD UPS is likely the most efficient for most locations. And so the ones that are closest to where my product are, even if it's big product and more expensive, I'm biting the bullet and sending via UPS. The second strategy I'm gonna do is find the next closest DC to ship products and ship LTL Amazon preferred carriers. So in this case, it's right in my back door in Utah, West Jordan at SLC2. For this shipment, I would book LTL Amazon Preferred Freight. Typically, you're not gonna have as much risk of your product not getting picked up because it's Amazon Preferred Carrier, and there's slightly less risk, especially when it's leaving to from uh, one state to another that's further away. It's more likely that you're gonna get a booking appointment and more efficient delivery. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And again, might cost me a little bit more than some of my preferred kind of backdoor carriers and partnerships I might have, but it's likely a way to hedge some of that risk. The third thing I'm gonna do, in this case, it would be New Jersey, is to identify either through my existing 3PL network or a partner that's very close to this location and see if they've got a regular daily appointment where they've got trucks coming by their facility and regular times where they plan on a weekly or daily basis to go into this New Jersey warehouse and work out a deal with them and say, hey, I know you're an expert in New Jersey. Here's what I'm looking to do. Can you commit without my product getting rolled or any delays in pickup? Can you put in a structure in place where you can get an appointment within a couple days in New Jersey? So I'd use that as an LTL custom selection that I would get for this. So why am I doing this, right? It's it's the last thing I would typically want to do is send them to all these different locations. I would typically find the most cost-effective, efficient way to do this, but all bets are off. And by having it go to three different locations using three different shipping methods, it reduces substantially the risk of one of these um products getting taken out and having slower delay times and stocking me out. At least I've got backup approaches in terms of where the product's going as well as how it is getting there. So again, guys, I know this stuff isn't sexy. It's not the funnest thing I'm ever going to cover, but it is so dang important 
to think through this and go through the battle plan now on how you're gonna get your products into the country and ultimately into Amazon FBA warehouses. And again, leaving a link up above, having a backup plan to FBM in addition to this FBA strategy will really position you in a place where you mitigate some of the risk, you mitigate some of the potential for lost earnings and stock outs, and you optimize your ability to be a pro Amazon seller and take out other players that are less sophisticated and that are not planning in the way that we are going to do it enacting these kind of strategies. So be ready for stuff to cost more, be ready for things to be more efficient, be ready for multiple shipments that may cost you more money. But if you increase your pricing, you're smart about things and you hedge your risk by using different methods and different locations to ship your product to, I think you're setting yourself up to be a pro seller this Q4 and manage the risk that is likely coming. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel before, subscribe. We're going to throw down a lot more value. I'm going to do some more case studies here in the coming weeks. In addition to some strategies around the communication changes that are happening for what you can send customers come November of this year. So all very important stuff to prep your brands and to you know level up your game for Amazon FBA. Hope it's been valuable. We will also see you next Monday for Mental Game Mondays. It's been a fun ride this week, guys. We hope to see you next week. Cheers.